Well, yesterday I was sitting in the middle of a jungle, surrounded by trees, grass, plants, beautiful flowers all around me. And I noticed one small plant there, which was different from everything else around it. It got my attention. And I wanted to take it back with me. But I also wondered, will it still hold that attractiveness when I remove it from that environment? I realized that to be beautiful, you have to be different from the rest. But it also puts you in the risk of being plucked out. But if you add to the beauty of the environment by being that different flower or plant, nobody will pluck you. You will be appreciated for who you are. Well, I am Koyal Rana, the 51st woman to win the title of Femina Miss India, the 51st woman to represent her country at Miss World. A lot of people think that a Miss India is only successful when she makes it big in Bollywood. I don't believe that. For me, success has a very different meaning. Doing what you love, making it big in what you do, finding your purpose and following it, living the life that you've dreamt for yourself. That's what success is for me. Now, all of us want to be successful in life, and we work hard day and night to be successful. We work, the work that we do takes us most of our time, and yet we try to find the meaning in the work that we do. We want to know where we fit in the big picture. They say, do what you love. But how often does it happen that you don't know what it is that you love? And even if you have figured it out, life throws so many obstacles at you to throw you off the track and you're lost again, trying to find purpose in life, trying to find meaning in life. To top it all, you're getting old. The feeling that the time is running out takes over you. Your hair starts to fall out. Your face is covered with wrinkles. The happy glow that once radiated from your face has just disappeared. You're tired now. Saturday nights out have turned into chilling at home or sleeping in gathering all the energy that you need to start the week again. Well, I have for you five stages where I will want to share with you the steps in how to find your purpose, how to understand yourself, and use those things to control your energies, to, to be in the mode of self-transformation. Stage one is the most difficult stage of all. Belief. Belief in yourself. Accepting for whatever you are right in this moment. I wasn't born perfect. I've had my imperfections. I've had my weaknesses that I have worked on on a period of time. I always wanted to be a Miss India and I loved wearing crowns. My weakness was communication. For a major part of my life, I could not speak in English. When I changed my school in ninth standard, it was the first interaction that I had with students who were talking in English with me. And I would just quietly sit in a corner, scared to make a conversation, too proud to admit that I can't speak the language of the elite, in this country. I'm very grateful to HBO and Star Movies for introducing subtitles on TV. They were my first teachers. Before that, I did not understand English movies. And when I finally, finally decided to participate in Miss India, I had a tough time coping with all the girls who were so good with their English. They had such a strong command over this language. And every day, my weakness was pulling me down. But that did not stop me. 
I knew who I was. I believed in myself. I believed in the worth. I believed in the hard work that I put in for myself to make myself worthy of that title. And that belief radiated through me and won the belief of the judges and finally that crown. But it doesn't end here, just believing in yourself once. You have to be consistent with your beliefs. You have to keep loving yourself every day. After I won, I was criticized from left, right and center all over the internet. People started telling me what I'm bad at, what I can't do. And I made their words my reality. I stopped believing in who I was. I started hating myself. But I still went on to Miss World with the hope that I had that probably there's something left in me, but there wasn't. And after Miss World, I had no idea how to pick myself up. My life was a complete blur. People who believed in me were now finding faults in me. And I don't blame them. Because if you don't believe in yourself, nobody else will. Stage two, understanding yourself through silver lining. When you're lost in life and you have to find your way back in, it's a very hard task. It's a difficult journey. You have to forget the negativity. You have to see everything that's happened in your life with a positive outlook. And when you do that, you start understanding why those things happen. They happen to make, to be able to make you stand where you are today. It shaped you into who you are today. When I spend time with, my, uh, with underprivileged children, working for them, I noticed that they had so much more than I did. They were happier than me. They didn't care about what's coming tomorrow or what people think about them. My mere presence with them, my mere interaction with them made them happy. And I didn't realize it then, the power that I had, the power to create happiness in another person's life. In the whole negative phase that I was living in, I stopped seeing who I was. I forgot who I was. How many of us get a whole speech dedicated just to us at your college farewell? How many of us, when we go back to our school, are given a grand welcome? How many of us get to inspire thousands of people around the world? How many of us get to give a TED talk? And I can go on, keep on counting my blessings that I have been bestowed. Because each moment, every moment that I was given in my life, be it bad or good, I am grateful for each of them because that is what shaped me who I am today. Listen to the past. Whenever something from the past bothers me, I don't try to shun it away. I try to think, analyze, why is it coming and coming back again and again? What is this past memory trying to tell me? What is it trying to teach me? And I always find a lesson and I'm at peace with myself and with that memory. Stage three is once you have to master the first two stages and when you do that, when you start believing in yourself and you understand who you are, you come to stage three, controlling your energies. The three steps that will help you do that. Step one is the connection of the soul, mind and body. Let's start with what a connection is with the mind and the body. Our body has taken its own control over ourselves. It wants to do whatever it feels like doing. The mind says, let's get this proposal done. The body says, nah, I'm a little tired, maybe later. The mind knows that this is what, this is an important task and it needs to be done right now. 
but it just gives in to the wishes of the body. And it happens in so many things and so many our daily activities. And because of this, the mind and the body connection, the switch is always on. Only when this switch turns off, will your mind connect with the soul. Now, how do you do that? And the soul is waiting back there, waiting just so this, this connection stops, so it can feed all the information, it can help you, guide you, and tell you where and how, give you solutions to your mind. So to break this connection, you have to completely give up anything that your body tells you to do. You can do it right now. Stay still. Do not move any part of your body. Do not try to adjust your body. Do not try to make yourself comfortable or an itch. Do not try to get rid of that itch. Just pure stillness. And you'll feel it when your body will completely give up. You will stop feeling. Your body will cease to exist for you. And in this moment, your soul would suddenly connect with the mind and you'll realize where you are, who you are, where you have to go from here and what you have to do. Now this is how you discipline your body in stillness. The other way to disciplining your body is in movement. That is done through yoga, which I won't be covering right now. So when you do these, uh, when you discipline your body completely, the more it's disciplined, the more, the stronger the connection of the mind and the soul is. Where does the soul get its information or its message? Now, the earth, connecting with the earth, the earth uh, has food to fuel both, all three uh, things, the soul, the mind, and the body from the food that you eat, from the air that you breathe, the land that you walk on. When you pray, you bow down because to be able to connect to the universe, you have to first connect to the earth. Lord Shiva is known to draw his energy and knowledge from earth. The closer you are to nature, the closer you will feel to your purpose. So travel, eat, the more, um, if you eat raw and more naturally available food, your soul will get its message in the purest form. Your body and mind will get its energy to do whatever work that you need to be done. Stage four, understanding youth. In this stage, you understand what youth is and why do you want to stay young. A young person is full of life and full of energy. A young person has a healthy body and a healthy mind. A young person is happy and cheerful. And when you have a purpose in life and you know where you're going, you will get all the energy that you need to perform all the tasks that you need to be need. When you eat healthy diet, you will have a healthy mind and a healthy body. And when you have all of that, you will be happy and cheerful. But what if you are not, follow, you're not on the right path and you don't know what your purpose is and you've stopped living that life? your energy source will be cut down. The universe will stop investing in you and will cut down on the energy that is for you to stay young. Now stage five is Vikurvana. Vikurvana is a Sanskrit word which means a constant state of self-transformation. When you master the previous four stages, you reach a state, you reach the ability to be to transform yourself constantly. Now this word is derived from certain words, V, 
which in Sanskrit means different directions. There is no limit to how far you can go, to what fields you can go. You can expand as much as you want. You can transform into different personalities whenever the need arises. Kar. Kar in Sanskrit means to perform. You will have all the energy that you need when you learn to control your energies and you'll be able to perform the tasks at hand. Vana is a beautiful word with a beautiful meaning, sound. The sound that you'll make, the music that your work will make, let it resonate, let it be heard. Let it inspire the people around you. Be in Vakarvana and stay young for as long as you want.